Hi, I'm Ami and this is Ruby. We're going to take a moment to talk about my essay, Eternal Migration, which um, was inspired when my mom came to help me with knee surgery. And I kind of travel back in time to experiences when I was a teenager and she was a younger mom into college and basically up until the spring. And I really hope you enjoyed the journey. It was very vulnerable for me and um, all about mothers and daughters. Writing Prompt, Eternal Migration by Annie Ward. I need to book my ticket, my mom said. There are too many moving parts. We have to be patient, flexible, I explained. There are a multitude of variables to my knee replacement surgery. At any point, the course could change. Employment leave, dental releases, pre-authorization, EKGs, lab work, infection, finances, medical exams, or a last-minute bout with COVID. Yet, 55 years of age, I still needed my mom. At my high school, formal dance meant cocktail dress. My sophomore year, my mom bought me a black and white plaid taffeta skirt with a pink belt. I wondered at the billowy sheen of the taffeta and the sophistication of the light, light pink of the leather. At first, I felt pretty, like Audrey Hepburn. Then later in the evening, I watched a tall Nordic girl in a white dress lean on the stair railing and airily talk with my boyfriend. I was confused by malaise and wondered if Audrey Hepburn had ever felt this way, not even knowing that there was a way or that I was allowed to feel it. Can my mom come back with me? I asked. Yes, the nurse said, handing me a clipboard overflowing with forms and medical releases. My mom, a petite woman, folded herself into an avocado green chair in the pre-surgery room. She looked tired and brave, eyes and ears straining to understand all the steps of the morning surgery. My junior year in high school, my boyfriend and I were still together and went off script for the formal dance. We both cared a lot about school and the people, but maybe we were tired of trying, studying, adjusting, and sometimes a fun idea is just fun. Either way, we no longer cared, and we broke out our parents' formal attire from when they were young. My boyfriend wore his grandfather's tail, a real beaver skin top hat, and a yellow silk oscot. I wore my mom's white silk ball gown with a voluminous skirt and a jeweled bodice. I was too big for it, so my mom fastened the back with an elastic band and draped a lace napkin over it. I felt nervous as we walked into the formal, wondering if this was the height of my nerdiness played out in public. And then the captain of the soccer team with a willowy blonde danced by us. Nice call, he said over his shoulder. And for half a moment, I felt dazzling. After a week at home, the surgical nerve block and my adult hospitality started to wear off. Can you fill my ice machine? Can you rub my foot? Will you get me ice cream? It was hard to like myself after my mom returned with the groceries and all I could do to manage was to collapse on the couch, exhausted and hurting. Still, the time, knowing that some day the roles would be reversed, would I be able to show the same kindness, the same patience, the necessary disconnect? The phone my mom had rented for me was giant and sat on the passenger's floor in a case as big as a hat box. The receiver had a spiral cord, and my mom paid $200 so her daughter would not have to be caught stranded on her trip out west. I thought about when I might have to use it, in the middle of a cornfield in Kansas, radiator steaming, black cows marcating the empty stretch of highway. Would that thing really work then? A cord, a box, and a sky that didn't even host radio waves? 
I couldn't imagine how it would. My new plan was just to get there and not break down. I had been a nervous and determined student at the University of Vermont. Nights were spent analyzing my double major GPA from every angle, as if it was an orange preserver and an eventual sea of financial hardship. After four years sequestered in a relatively empty library and a turpentine fume studio, I made my way through a sea of classmates in black nylon robes in a sweaty, overcrowded gymnasium. It took less than five seconds to say Anne Ward, magnum cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. I took that nugget and ran as fast as I could away from university. Are you ready for Masterpiece Theater? asked Mom as she delivered me a tub of post-surgery medications. That was our favorite time of day. The ice machine filled, the dishes put away, the closed caption finally turned on. Mom and I perched up our backs against the pillows, eating popsicles. I looked to the side of her impossibly light eyes. My grandmother and uncle had the same eyes, like the sky and the sea at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. The trunk of my Nissan was stuffed with climbing gear, easels, ski boots, journals, and the Norton Anthology of English Literature. It was the June after I graduated. I wore shorts and sandals. The sun felt good on my skin. I thought of the blazing blue skies of the West, the rugged tear of red canyons, and the high plateau views that went to the edge of the earth. I didn't know where I was going to live, either Boulder, Jackson Hole, or New Mexico. There were maps of each of the states tucked in the side door pocket. I would, pick, I would pick up an acquaintance of a friend who would ride with me to St. Louis. Gas money. Sure, I was terrified, but that is normal when you are young and you do so many things because there is no agreeable alternative. There was a rush as I thrust the clutch into reverse. The car felt weighted on my dashboard flashed because the trunk would not close all the way. I kept waiting for my mom to step in and say, this is too crazy, but she never did. Even then, I was still in the glorious sun of my solar system. I couldn't help but wonder what she was feeling as I pulled out the driveway. On the third week after surgery, mom made her ticket home, back to her life in Connecticut back to her lovely husband, garden, writing, and friends. I too had to stop being the patient who kept asking for ice cream and become the adult who had her own friends, career goals, and dreams. As I watched mom's shuttle pull out of the driveway, I wasn't ready. I had never been ready. I wanted to feel safe, a mom kind of safe. But there are so many things you do when you're older, and there is no agreeable alternative. Eternal Migration is the second edition of Ani Ward Curates, written and produced by Ani Ward and her talented girlfriends.